Hi everyone. Today we're going to do an unboxing. This one's going to be a little unusual. Normally, for people who are not aware, unboxings are um, very capitalist style videos wherein um, video streamers will take a product, like a special edition of a, of a video game, for example, or something that has a lot of pieces to it, and they will unbox it and show you what you get in this box. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a um, hurricane recovery unboxing. Um, my unboxing will be the unboxing of the emergency box that the last box that I was going to take out of the house if anything happened during Hurricane Ida. Um, so other than the animals which are crowding for attention and of course other important documents which already were in the car at, at the time. Um, to be ready just in case we had to evacuate the house for any reason. Um, and then there was the last box. And so the last box were the last minute things, the last really heartfelt personal items that I grabbed leaving the house that I was like, if anything happened to the house, these would be irreplaceable. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing today is looking at my unboxing. Um, it's actually more than just the one box, so I will do the box last, and then there are three other items that would I would have grabbed at the same time that I was grabbing this box, and I could have slung that over my shoulder. The first thing I grabbed was this bag, which is completely full of rechargeable batteries, um, and this one is actually a flashlight as well. So these emergency power bricks would have been the last portable power that I would have had, and if anything that had happened, other than the vehicle, these these flashlights and batteries for charging our phones or other flashlights that are rechargeable, which I try to go, go after, um, this would have been our last power. One of the other things that I would have grabbed was this, which was completely invaluable to us during our hurricane time. This is a portable radio, super old. Uh, my ex's mother, I believe, gave this to us for a nor'easter snow apocalypse type northern style storm. Um, and then, so it has a crank, so you can charge it. It has a light, it has the radio, it has like dedicated weather channels, which just kind of loop stuff on repeat. Um, it does have a siren, so this is an, uh, supposedly a cell phone charger. I've never used that, but the radio and the light alone, the radio alone was just invaluable. This was the only source of information that we had coming in when there was no cell service. Um, the, you know, when <laughs> we were done getting information, we switched it to just regular radio just to have some sort of music because nothing was working. I wasn't going to use my phone for, uh, the little bit of music that I had kind of saved on there. Um, I just didn't know what was going to happen. So this was invaluable. Uh, it lasted all week. It is still going on the same three AA batteries that I put into it. Um, it's great. Absolutely love this thing. They, uh, we had gotten some in donation that are a lot smaller now. It's the same brand. It's the e LL Bean E-Ton or FR300. I don't know. E-Ton e brand. There's some really small ones now. Um, this is definitely older but I love this thing. This is my grandfather's violin. Um, my family, when I was a kid growing up in school, this was my uh, show violin. Um, so I would play this for shows, not just my regular practice time. Um, it is, I, I don't have the, the number offhand at this point, but I think this did actually break a hundred years old or is just about at. Um, and we had this fully restored when I was a kid. This is my grandfather's when he was in the Navy. He used to always tell the story of how he uh, held onto the violin and floated to safety when he was in the water at one point. Um, so far as we know, this is not a true story, but it is a funny story. Um, yeah, so really special. The water and the humidity would have absolutely ruined this. You can pop all the joints on it. The wood itself, which was when we had it restored, because there was a lot of water damage to it already, I know exactly how twisted a violin neck can be. Um, and we it took a long time and a lot of money for my family to restore it in the first place. And so 
it's just incredibly important to me. I've played violin since I was a kid. Um, this is a really special violin for me. My other instruments I did end up putting up high, um, like nearly to the ceiling where they are in the other room. So they would have been safe from floodwaters. They would not necessarily have been safe from humidity, although the cases that they are in do help with the humidity and expensive cases for that. Um, but if the roof had gone, they would have gone. So it's like a risk kind of management that you're always playing. And now for the actual box, the unboxing. This is the box. It's not very big. This was our last minute, last minute stuff. Oh, got a little squish. This is my ceremony hat. My friend beaded this for me. This was, this whole um, hat was a gift and it's very special to me. Um, so this, this of course came. Family photos. My family is not, has not historically been very big on taking photos in general, period. So these I just don't have many family photos as it was. The other family photos that I did grab, though, is my my altar of people who have passed, of family members and, and close family friends who have passed. This is normally on display in, in this main living room. Um, I just gathered them all and brought them with me. So all my families, all my families coming with me. All my family includes my animal family through the years. And that includes the remains of my childhood dog um, and my partners and my cat who passed um, from cancer this spring. So I grabbed them. Um, my old dog's favorite, favorite toy. The family menorah, which was passed to me a long time ago. My parents' dog passed also, um, this past year. So I grabbed her favorite toy. All the family comes with. Um, small things that I grab just to grab. Things that are really important to me. Uh, uh, a small set of drawing and art materials. Uh, a sharpie, a pen, a pencil, an eraser, lining pens. Um, a knife. Yet another small... Um, medical kit. There are medical kits all over my house. And then there is a larger street medic bag in my van. So I was like ready for, for hurt to happen. Um, and to be able to treat that as best as possible. Um, so just very last minute things. There was also two lighters in here. I ended up needing the lighters in the recovery period. So I did take those out, but lighters and a knife. You can do a lot with those two things. Uh, I grab stickers. I norm I'm an artist. Um, I do normally sell these, so it was just a very quick and easy way of if I needed to make some cash somewhere, if I needed to evacuate somewhere that I was unfamiliar and needed some really quick cash, I can at least sell my little stickers for a few bucks a piece and, and have something in. Um, and then the last thing that was here is just my full photo, my photo album. 
Um, again, as I said, my family isn't really big on picture taking. Um, so this is something I had previously gone through uh, in all of my photos condensed down to my, my photo album um, of really important things. Um, the other, you know, the others I may have backups of, I may have CD discs um, that, that I put them all on, but these are pretty priceless, I guess I would say, is I, I don't necessarily have copies of anything in here. Um, so yeah, so that's my unboxing. These are the decisions that I had to make that last few hours before the hurricane really landed, uh, made landfall. And it was like, if something happens, what do I take? Everything else, I have to leave. I can, I can prepare things as best as possible and, and try to make everything as safe as possible. And I, I tried to choose a little bit of higher land as well when I moved down here in the first place to, to think about these things and the realities of the rising water and climate change and the storm strengthening and just the frequency and number of storms were just everything I had to take into consideration. What could I not live without, or I can live without it, but what would really hurt my heart? What, what, what am I grabbing? Um, and then one of my cousins is staying with us as well. She lost her whole house and we had to move her stuff in. This was her last minute stuff. This was her family pictures and all the family stuff that there were some really irreplaceable uh, family heirlooms and, and photographs of our family, our native family, um, that just needed to be kept safe. They need to be kept in uh, climate control so that they, they won't fade in anything like that. So we had to help her unload her car and her stuff is staying with us with all these family heirlooms and pictures and history and tribal history and it just it really expounds like it really just strikes home for me of like the when these things are lost you know it's not just a family photo this is tribal history that we may not necessarily ever have again there's a, one photo in particular there's only a few copies of we really need to get some more copies of it and and get this all documented but our tribal um, our tribal centers are down the bayou. The Golden Meadow building could have been completely wiped away. Our radio station was completely wiped away. The tribal center we have now is still in Homa. I mean, if any, it, it did get some damage. They are gutting the building right now to renovate it. Like, we need to think about these things when, when we're, when we have our very material records, paper records, that because historically we have not had the funding to be able to take care of our own people, of our own staff, of our own basic needs, things like records are only kind of just now, maybe, maybe not just now, but there's the technology and the money and the resources to now finally start to get these things preserved in the way that they needed when historically as a marginalized and underrepresented people and completely kicked when we're down all the time, even now, um, people's records in their houses are important vital links. The Homa Language Project started from a tape found in somebody's attic, an entire project, an entire language revitalization. We could find more records of people's stuff and get more, more well-rounded histories and resources and how much of these things are just getting lost when these hurricanes hit and just, they're just gone. When COVID hit and our elders are passing, how much knowledge is just gone?